G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Nothing on the bench, what's going on? Oh, hang on, we've got some batteries here. We've got that one, and we've got, oops, oh no. That one, that one, that one, and that one, because this is the much requested video on what batteries should I use in my mini quad. And I've got a selection here for you. These are all from Hobby King, uh, Turnergy Nanotech, Turnergy Nanotech, Turnergy Nanotech, Zippy, um, and they go from 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 2.2 ampere hours. And those are the common sizes that you're probably going to use. And I'll talk now about which is the best perhaps for you and why you might want to use each one and, you know, the basics of mini quad battery. So let's get started. Um, first of all, uh, the most important thing is not the 1.3, 1.4, 1.5 or 2.2. It is the C rating. The C rating determines how much power you can actually draw out of these batteries. I've done videos on C ratings in the past, but suffice to say the higher the C rating, generally the more current you can draw. And since our power going to our motors is a factor of the current times the voltage, then the high C battery should deliver more power, all else being equal. Um, but of course, C is only one aspect. You've got to multiply the C times the capacity to get the actual amount of power you can draw. So let's take a look at these. Which one of these batteries do you think would be capable of delivering the most power to the motors on our mini quad? You know, um, quickly, I'll give you five seconds, time's up. Um, let's do the sums. This one is a 1.3 milliamp times 45 C. So if we multiply 1.3 times 45, that gives us 58 and a half, right? That's the number of amps we should be able to draw out of there without damaging the battery. The battery should be able to deliver 58 and a half amps quite capably. Okay, that's on this little battery. Next battery up is the Turnergy uh, Nanotech. This is a Traxxas battery, which was originally designed, I think, for buggies or something. I don't know. Anyway, it is 1.4 ampere hours and it's 40 C. Now if we multiply those two numbers together we get 56. So this battery actually in theory can produce, can deliver less power than that battery even though it looks a bit bigger. Moving up the scale we have a 1.5 ampere hour times 35 C. If we do the math on that we get 52.5. So this can deliver more power than that and this can deliver more power than that. Isn't that strange? Even though we're getting smaller, we're getting bigger, the amount of actual power these can deliver in terms of the instantaneous power goes down. And if we get to this here, the 2.2 amp pack, you think, well, it's a big battery, that must deliver a lot of power. Well, this is a 20C one. And if we multiply 20 times 2.2, we get 44 amps. So this is even worse. So it's, it's kind of, um, it's, it runs contrary to what you would assume. The smaller battery here actually will give you more performance than the bigger batteries. And when I say performance, I'm talking about punch, I'm talking about speed, I'm talking about acceleration, I'm not talking about endurance, but, but endurance does come into it because obviously this battery is lighter than that battery and that battery is lighter than that battery. So uh, you've got to remember that with any multi-rotor, um, the battery weight's usually a fairly significant proportion of the weight of the whole craft, especially in a mini quad. So um, if you're putting a heavier battery in, you're going to be drawing more power just to keep the battery flying as well as the craft. It's going to make the whole thing heavier. The motors will require more power at hover. So you might not actually get the more flight time you think you might you think well this is 1.3 that's 2.2 this has to last a lot longer right yeah, not necessarily let's get our scales out and have a look at what i'm talking about here right let's take our smallest battery and what does it weigh it weighs 117 grams and that's going to give us 1.3 amps for an hour okay next battery up this is an extra 100 milliamps a tenth of an amp more so you'd expect it to weigh a little bit more and <laughs> well, not really much more, is it? What's this? This is 118. What was the other one? 170. So these weigh pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. So, you know, why is this one not a bit lighter than that? Well, because this is higher C, and higher C batteries tend to weigh a bit more. This is a this is a 45 C, and that's a 40 C. So these batteries, weight-wise, they're pretty much the same. Power-wise, yeah. They're also pretty much the same. The difference is this can deliver, this little one can deliver more current than that one. We already proved that. This can deliver only 56 amps and this can do 58.5 because of the C ratings. So out of the two, I'd go for this one. Now we move up then to the 1.5 and that weighs 129 grams. So it's more, it's heavier. It's an extra 10 or an extra 100 milliamps over this one, but it does weigh more. You know, what are we talking about? Because I can't even remember. 118 to 129, so 11 grams heavier. It doesn't sound like much, does it? But honestly, in a mini quad, when you're really hammering it, 11 grams, you'll really feel the difference of this battery. Because remember also, this battery can't even put out as much current as this one or this one. So if you're really hammering, if you want to go racing, you want the best performance, you know, maximum 
punch out and everything, then this battery is just going to outperform either of these two, right? So that's quite an important thing. Now we have the other one, the Zippy. Here we go. And this is a compact Zippy. Um, 165 grams, so you know you start to look at starting to get quite porky with these, and that's why I know a lot of people do start flying the mini quads with these 2200 batteries, probably because they've got them lying around from other models. But really, if you've been flying a mini quad with one of these, go and buy one of these 1.3s and try that. You will be blown away. Now, don't get the 25 to 50C or whatever it is, you get the 45 to 90C. It has to be the high C one. And you'll find your mini quad just a totally different craft because it's much lighter and you've got more power. Because remember, this can only deliver 44 amps. This one can do 58 and a half amps. So this is not only going to be lighter, it's going to have more power from those motors coming out because the voltage won't drop so much when you nail the throttle. So those are very important issues. And it's well worth waiting. Now, don't, whatever you do, don't bother with the little zippy compact you know, 11, 1200 or 1500 batteries are crap. They're called 35, some of them are rated to 35C, but they really, as I've said, they just don't stand up. They're really not a 35C battery at all. The voltage sags so quickly that, you know, it's really annoying. Your voltage alarm will be going off right from the time you lift off the ground. Now, as I said, these batteries all come from Hobby King. They're all the Ternergy or the Zippy batteries because it's, it's easier for me to get these here. I mean, give you an example i see people advertising you know batteries like this 1300s or 1500s on on the new zealand web and local shops and sometimes they want almost 50 dollars for one of these 50 bucks are you kidding me people i mean these are really reasonably priced from hobby king now they, they're certainly probably not the well, i'm pretty sure they're not the best batteries in the world but as far as value goes i find it pretty hard to go beyond these when I'm shopping, you know, and having to deal with $50 local prices. Um, so I have used these and I'm quite happy with them. For racing, there is another brand, Dynergy, I think it is, has, but seems to be doing really well. They have a 65C battery, which is better than any of these. Um, and I'm going to get some of those and try them out. But I mean, a lot of people may not have access to the Dynergy batteries. I'm going to buy them locally because there's a local source, which I found, which is reasonably priced. I mean, I think it's about... $25, 30 bucks or something, that sounds like a lot of money, but by the time you factor in freight, if you were getting it from somewhere else in the world, yeah, it's a pretty reasonable price for one of these batteries. So I'm gonna try those out, but let's talk a bit about um, how to look after your batteries, because one of the things that makes me cry so much is I see people, they buy new batteries, and they come out and they fly for a couple of weekends, and it's great, and then about a month down the track, as soon as they start taking off and their battery alarm's going, or they're just not getting the flight times out of their batteries, what has gone wrong? Why have their batteries failed so early? Well, usually the reason is bad battery management. By that I mean, I mean it's so tempting when you're flying just to keep flying until it won't fly anymore. And that will be the quickest way to ruin your batteries, you know. If you take your batteries down to dead flat every time, then they're not going to last long. And I'm talking maybe a dozen cycles before you really start noticing that they just don't have any punch anymore. LiPos aren't designed to be run dead flat. In fact, a lot of chargers won't even let you charge a battery if it's dropped below three volts per cell. But some people out there, either they don't have the telemetry or they don't set a timer on their transmitter and they just keep flying until the damn things fall out of the sky and then they wonder why their batteries puff or their batteries don't last. Well, when I fly mine, I usually set my battery alarm voltage to about 11.2 volts on a three cell pack. That gives me plenty of flying time. I can get five minutes flying time like that. And it means that when I land, my battery usually comes up to about 11.4, which, surprisingly enough, is storage charge. So I can just, at the end of the day's flying, throw my batteries in a bag, go home. I don't have to worry about them. They're not over-discharged and they're not overcharged. They're ready for me to recharge whenever I like. If I don't go flying for two weeks, that's fine. The batteries will stand up really well because storage charges are there to make the batteries last as long as possible. If you store these LiPos flat, they will puff and they will fail. If you store them fully charged, then eventually they will puff and they will fail. That's just the way the chemistry works. These are not designed to be stored fully charged or flat. And if you do so, well, that's what you're going to end up with, dud batteries. Now, considering how many batteries you go through in a day's mini quad flying, um, you would probably end up like me with a lot of these. I've probably got, you know, maybe two dozen batteries. And they're all in good shape, apart from a couple of them crashed. They're all in really good shape. They Despite the fact that some of them are over a year old, they stand up well to the loads I put on them because I don't thrash the ass out of them. I don't let them get over discharged. And if I do discharge a battery below the 11.4 volts resting voltage, then I, that day when I get home, I put it on storage, bring it back up to the storage charge. And doing that, my batteries just last for ages. Um, no problems at all. While those around me end up with puffy batteries that just don't deliver on performance. So, 
really worth that. Good battery management is absolutely essential with any model, but more essentially with a mini quad because you know we're pushing these batteries close to the limit. We're running at the rated C ratings of these batteries quite often. In a fixed wing, you don't do that very often, quite often. You know, you, you may get a, a 22C battery in your AXN. You can't draw 44 amps on an AXN, so you're running at half the rated C at full throttle, and most of the time you're probably drawing a quarter of the rated C. So the batteries get a really easy life in a fixed wing. In a mini quad, well, you know, those batteries are going to get a hammering, and you're more inclined to run them really flat. So don't do it. Right, that's it. If you've got questions on this whole mini quad battery scene, or batteries in general, then feel free to ask them. Put them in the space below the video provided by YouTube, and I will do my best to address any concerns, questions, or queries you might have. And as I say, I will be testing some other batteries, the Dynagy ones, especially because they seem to be so popular at the moment. That'll be coming up soon as I get my hands on some, and soon as it stops raining because it's winter and it's cold, I'm freezing here in New Zealand. Thanks for watching. See you again very soon on... A bench. Whoops. Nearly missed that bit. There you go.